let's try and look at how lights pass through a lens. In this case, a converging lens or a convex lens. So first we need an object being placed first. So let's say I place an object here on the focal point of the convex lens itself. I place it right on the focal point. So let's send a few uh, light rays from the top point of this object towards the lens and see how it get refracted due to the difference index of refraction of this lens compared to its surrounding. So the first uh, ray will be a ray that is parallel to the optic axis or principal axis. So if you have a ray coming through in this direction, so you encounter a change in media when change in medium when it strikes on this uh, convex lens at this point over here. So when it encounters a change in medium, we know that in this case, since it's transparent, we should look at the refraction, the idea of the concept of refraction. So refraction means bending, and we need to know how much it will be bent. So to know how much it will be bent, we will need to use uh, uh, the diagram approach for refraction. First, we need to know the normal line. To know the normal line, well, this is a spherical uh, these two curved surface here is formed by a circle or a sphere. Okay, in that case, if you draw a line from the center of curvature out towards that point on the glass surface or the lens surface, that line itself will be the normal line. In this case, this dotted line here will be the normal line. Now we have a normal line ready. We can label this as angle of incidence. Then we can label this as ray of incidence. And from there, we can try to determine the direction of the refraction. So uh, we know that what happens here is this black dotted line is 90 degree normal line. You are coming in with an angle of incidence, which is by a certain value. We know that since this glass here or this lens here is usually having an index of refraction that is much higher compared to the surrounding, we know that any rays that goes from the uh, first medium into the lens, we experience a refraction towards the normal. It's getting closer to the normal. Means by the angle between the normal line and the ray gets smaller now. Okay, so we only do this qualitatively. We are not going to calculate the exact angle just to get an idea how things, how the light bends. So now I've added on this line here to represent the refracted ray now traveling in this lens here. We mentioned just now we want this lens to be thin because we don't want too much travel of the light ray inside the lens. Later you'll see why that would be a problem. Okay, but for now we can still see that the, the distance of traveling inside the lens is still very small, so not a big problem. But now you encounter a second medium, but uh, not the second medium, you encounter a second change of medium. So encounter a second change of medium, you experience once again another refraction. But this time you're entering from a denser medium to a less dense medium. So what you should be expecting is refraction away from a normal. But again, to determine the direction of refraction, first we need the normal line. So this surface here, it, uh, the surface here is constructed by this sphere, which is the dotted yellow line over here. So we should do our uh, center of curvature line towards the surface from this center of curvature instead of that center of curvature. Look at which circle does the center of uh, which cent which circle does the lens surface belongs to. Then you do it from that center of curvature. So in this case, from this center of curvature, you draw a straight straight line pass through this point over here. This point, okay. Then if we zoom in and see, we will see that uh, you have an angle of incidence which is this much. Then we know that you get refracted away from a normal. So this angle here must be larger than this angle over here. Okay, so once you know that, you may continue to construct this, the ray. You know that you get further bent downwards, bent towards this direction. And uh, based on our observation from experiment, we see that if our light is incident parallel to the optic axis, we'll find that the refracted ray will be passing through the focal point on the other side of the lens. So this is what we discovered through experiment. And if you do calculation, it's basically just two types, two times 
of refraction. That's why we say it's a pair of refractive surface back in the previous video. Okay, the second ray will be a ray that is passing through the center of the lens. This is the this laser pointer here is now showing where's the center of a lens. So if you have a ray which is incidenting on the center of a lens, once again you encounter a change of medium over here. So we use a normal line to determine the 90 degree line coming out from this center of curvature. So we try to determine the direction of refraction. If we zoom in, we'll see that the direction of refraction will be uh will make this angle smaller than the angle of incidence. But since this distance travel here is short, uh from uh, from from microscopic, you see from outside. You might not notice there's a very significant bend because yes there is a bend but since the distance travel is not long enough you will not see there's a significant change in distance compared to just traveling by straight line but if you make your lens ultra thick like this thick you see that you'll be you'll be distorted the line will be distorted by a more significant amount that's why we say that these equations this ray diagram here are valid for thin lenses only Okay, but if you can't really get it, it's okay. It's not a big problem. You just need to know that thin lenses, less distance travel in the lens, less distortion. Okay, so once you reach another another surface, once again you draw a second normal, and from this second normal, you determine that the angle of refraction should be larger than the angle of incidence because you're going from a denser medium to a less dense medium. So once you have determined that, you continue to draw a line. Well, this one we determine from experiment. We see that the line will be in this way. Okay. Now, what you may notice is that the ray number one we have a refracted ray that is parallel to the refracted ray of ray number two. So, if these two rays, these two refracted rays here are parallel, what does it mean? Is the first ray, the first refracted ray, and the second refracted ray will never intersect each other. So if, if they is if it's not possible for them to intersect each other, what it means is essentially you can't form an image. Because if you want image to be formed, you need intersection between the refracted ray or the extension of the refracted ray. So in this case, this refracted ray cannot intersect. Any extension of the refracted ray backwards can also never intersect because it's parallel as well. In this case, you can't really form an image if you place an object at the focal point. Okay, so all these things is just to tell you how light actually travel. This is not an official ray diagram. So let me try to show you how to redraw a formal ray diagram for our syllabus. Okay, for ray diagram, we do need to show that the refraction happens twice. Once on the first surface, one of the one at the second surface. What I need to do is instead draw a line here to represent the center line of the lens, which we call it mid plane the middle plane okay plane is by a, a flat 2d plane which is at the middle splitting the lens into two it's just an imaginary line it's not a solid line at all okay so you need to draw this because when you draw your ray later let's say you place an object here you place an object quite far away from a lens then when you draw your ray right you don't need to show that the refraction happens first then second like this so let me show how it works Okay, so this is a set of three rays that you can determine the direction of refraction very easily. So if you see my first ray, which I demonstrated just now, it's just a ray parallel to the optic axis. You see that I do need to show that refraction happens once, twice. I need to draw my line towards the mid plane, and from the mid plane, I draw the refracted ray. So this is a simplification, because since it's thin lens, this sim simplification is fine to be done. Okay, so uh, after the mid-plane, you change your direction. Then in this case, you'll be towards the focal point as what we discussed before. Okay, the second line here, the second ray here will be a, will be a ray that pass through the center of the lens. If you pass through the center of a lens, as I say just now, for thin lens, for thin lens the distortion is not very serious. In that case, from, from a microscopic, from far away, you see that it's just a straight line. Okay, so what I draw here is just a straight line passing through the uh, thin lens over here. Okay, 
Once you have drawn these two rays, you can actually find that the intersect is over here already. But as I say, if possible to find three, find all three. Then you'll be very confirmed with the answer that you submitted. Okay, so the third ray will be coming in the direction that pass through the focal point, which is in front of the lens. Just now, it will bend towards the focal point behind the lens. Now you are having your ray that is propagating in a direction that pass through the focal point in front of the lens. If that's the case, you see that the ray that you form will be parallel to the optic axis coming out from the other side of the lens. Again, you see that these three rays intersect at the same point. So this point uh, will be where your image are. Okay. So this image here is formed by three actual refracted ray, not an extension. So this image here will be a real image, just that it will be inverted and it will be diminished, judging by how it's below the optic axis and how the arrow here is smaller than the arrow of the object. Okay. So with that said, now you have completed a ray diagram. Uh, remember some stuff. Uh, you need to label the arrows to represent object and image. You need to label O and I to represent object and image. For your rays, remember to draw the arrows to indicate the direction of the rays. Okay, so these are some of the important stuff. The mid plane, yes, is quite important to draw, but these dotted lines for the center, uh, for the circles, uh, it's not uh, it's not needed at all. Okay, so that is a ray diagram for converging lens. Let's try and do this for another object. Let's say right now I place an object that is near to the lens. Okay, in that case, I'll try to draw the ray diagram for this situation. So I'll draw all three sets together. So this will be the results. So the first ray will be a ray parallel to the optic axis. Then it will uh, refract, bend towards the focal point behind the lens. The second one will be a, a, a ray that is passing through the center of the lens itself. In that case, you can just think of it as it gets, uh, it's not bent at all, so it just travels in a straight line. There is bending, but it's just that it's negligible. You cannot observe it from the outside if it's just a thin lens. Okay, the third ray will be a ray that is in the direction that pass through the focal point in front of the lens. Okay. The focal point is in front of the lens and you have a ray that is in the direction that pass through this focal point. In that case, you see that once it strikes the mirror, you bend towards a direction which is parallel to the optic axis. But if you see all three refracted rays, you might notice that there's no position where it intersects. In that case, what you can do is you extend all the refracted ray backward and see whether it, inter whether it intersects on the other side. Well, yes, that's the case. If you see that all the three extension here actually intersects at this point over here, so we can make a conclusion that there's image being formed at this distance away from the lens. Okay, so since these all three rays here are just extension of the actual refracted ray backwards, so this is not the actual ray itself. It's just a projection, it's just an extension. So in this case, we call this image form here to be a virtual image. Okay, so this is a virtual image and it's upright because they are both the, on the same, both the optic axis. Then it's also magnified because the, the size of this image arrow here is much larger than the object arrow. So we produce an image which is virtual, upright and magnified. Okay, so that's how you draw another ray diagram, in this case, uh, uh, an object which is near the converging lens. Okay, so here is a picture that I snapped from a book, University Physics, Young and Friedman. So over here, they have uh, drawn out quite very nicely, colorfully, all the different, uh, all the ray diagrams for different cases where you place your object at different distances from the lens. If the object is quite far away, then you form a certain characteristics of image. If the object is placed at the focal point, then you see similar just now the image is at infinity or the image cannot be formed. Okay, then we also put one near the near the near the lens, which I think is this one. We put one object near the lens, you see that the the image form is virtual and it's upright and magnified. Okay, so I've drawn this one just now and I've drawn this one just now. So the rest are here to, for your reference.
to obtain the characteristics of the image if you know the distance of the object from the lens. Okay, so that's all for converging lens. We'll move on to uh, diverging lens in the next video.